Steve Jobs famously said back in 2010 that no one is gonna buy a big phone. Well, with most people having to wait a month after Friday's pre-order for their Plus to arrive, we'd say it's a hit, or supplies are severely limited. To avoid that month delay, we sent our intrepid teardown crew to Melbourne, Australia to be first in line to get our 6 Plus. Let's take a look at how this giant is put together and tear it down. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down Apple's brand new iPhone 6 Plus. The iPhone 6 Plus is Apple's biggest phone ever, measuring in at 158.1 millimeters in length, 77.8 millimeters in width, and 7.1 millimeters thick. If you're wondering, this is right around the same size as Samsung's recently announced Note 4, but a little thinner and lighter as well, weighing in at 172 grams. The 6 Plus comes with a 5.5-inch Retina display that has a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and a pixel density of 401 pixels per inch. Oh, and if you're looking for that power button, Apple has moved it from the top right to the upper right-hand side of the phone, making it easier to reach on this larger model. Before we crack open the iPhone 6 Plus, we take note of a couple controversial decisions made by Apple. First up, the two plastic antenna strips found along the back of the phone. While these help with the iPhone 6 Plus's wireless reception, many people find them unappealing. Secondly, the now infamous camera bulge. Unfortunately, it seems Apple was unable to shave any thickness off the camera sensor, so it's not flush with the rest of the chassis. While the lens cover is made out of sapphire glass, we are concerned about what this design choice may mean for durability. Right off the bat, we're met with our old friends, the pentalobe screws. It doesn't seem like it would be an Apple product teardown without them these days. Fortunately for us, we came prepared and they were out in a snap. With those screws removed and a little help from our eyes clack, we got our iPhone 6 Plus opened. Prepared to meet the Touch ID cable we found in last year's iPhone 5S, we opened our 6 Plus with a little extra care. But there's no cable here. We're all cleared to open. Just like the iPhone 5S, the display assembly cables are held in place on the logic board by a metal bracket. And once we get that removed, the display assembly comes off and we get our first unencumbered look inside the iPhone 6 Plus. On to the battery. After quickly dispatching the battery connector bracket, we begin searching for the battery adhesive tabs. These tabs make removing the battery super easy even though it's glued in place. But it's important to note that if you pull wrong, you're in for quite an ordeal in getting your battery out. This battery is a 2915 milliamp hour battery, which is nearly double the capacity of the iPhone 5S's, which is a 1560 milliamp hour battery, and is also slightly larger than the Galaxy S5's, which is a 2800 milliamp hour battery. Apple claims this battery will give you up to 24 hours talk time on 3G and up to 12 hours of internet browsing. With the battery removed, we set to work on the rest of the phone. Hey look, the vibrator assembly is now located to the right of the battery below the logic board. If you've read reviews of the iPhone 6 Plus, you might have heard about the robustness of its vibration. Well, this is the guy responsible for it. Next up, we targeted the rear camera for removal and all it took was a little tweezer action for it to come out. Just like the iPhone 5S, this is an 8 megapixel camera with a 2.2 aperture, but the iPhone 6 Plus brings new additions to the table, including optical image stabilization and a focus pixel phase detection autofocus, which we've seen before in the Galaxy S5. What's next? How about the logic board? The logic board is only held in place by a few screws, but like other versions of the iPhone, it has an antenna cable connected to its underside that needs to be disconnected before we remove it. On the board, we find the brand new 64-bit A8 processor, which it seems has one gigabyte of LPDDR3 RAM, much to the disappointment of a lot of people. The board is also home to the 16 gigabytes of SK Hynix made flash storage, the updated M8 Motion coprocessor, the Invincence MP67B 6-axis gyroscope and accelerometer combo, and the NXP 65V10 NFC module and secure element, which is the chip responsible for the iPhone 6 Plus's new NFC feature. Now that we have the logic board out, we have access to the speaker assembly and lightning connector. It only takes a couple of screws being removed to get the speaker assembly out of the rear case. And just like last year's iPhone 5S, the lightning connector and headphone jack have been integrated into one cable that is screwed in and glued onto the rear case. There's not much left in the rear case, but we've still got the power button ribbon cable assembly and the volume button ribbon cable assembly. Both of these cables consist of tiny components strung on thin and fragile cables. They're glued into the rear case and require prying to get off. Needless to say, the chances are high that you might damage them during any attempted disassembly. 
Lastly, we turn our attention to the display assembly. The display assembly is home to the front facing camera assembly that includes the earpiece speaker, the home button, which after removing a metal bracket popped right off, and of course, that 5.5 inch retina display that is, like past iPhones, fused to the front panel. Cracked glass still means replacing the display. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything. So we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between one and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and one being the most difficult. The iPhone 6 Plus scored a seven out of 10, and here's why. On the upside, the display assembly comes out of the phone first, simplifying screen repairs. Accessing the battery is straightforward and not at all difficult. And the fingerprint sensor cable has been rerouted, fixing a significant repairability issue with the iPhone 5S and making the phone much safer to open. But on the downside, the iPhone still uses proprietary pentalobe screws on the exterior, requiring a specialty screwdriver to remove them. And finally, Apple does not share repair information for the iPhone 6 Plus to independent repair shops or consumers. And that's our teardown. Special thanks to the folks at MacFixit Australia for once again hosting us on one of our international teardowns. And if you'd like to check out the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.